welcome Simmers to today's Sims 3 live broadcast. Sorry for the delay, never a dull moment here at the Sims 3 studio, but we have got quite the broadcast lined up for you guys today. My name's Ryan Vaughn, I'm the lead producer on the Sims 3, and today we have tons of live demos, never before seen content and features, as well as tons of Q&A for you guys to get your questions in and your answers out to you. So thank you guys for tuning in. We've got an awesome show set up. We're gonna to start today's show with Sim Guru Graham as he shows us for the first time ever a live gameplay demo of The Sims 3 Island Paradise. This game is looking amazing and I'm so excited to start the show off with this demo. After that, we're gonna have my friends from the store on, Sim Guru Megan and Sim Guru Samedi to show us the new digital world coming from the Sims 3 store. It's called Aurora Skies, and I have to tell you, it is looking amazing. There's fjords and all kinds of stuff you've never seen before in a Sims 3 world, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Then, later in the show, Brittany Henry and uh, uh, Lauren McElmore will be on to give you a slice of the latest and greatest from the Sims 3 University. It's looking hot. You guys don't want to miss this stuff. So throughout all the broadcasts, we're going to be taking questions from the Cover It Live window just below, as well as taking questions on Twitter. To ask them, tweet us at The Sims 3 using the Sims 3 LB hashtag. So there's lots of stuff going on, lots of great demos, tons of new features, never before seen stuff, all coming at you today in our live broadcast. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Graham Nardone, who has the first live gameplay demo set up for The Sims 3 Island Paradise coming out this June. Take it away, Graham. Hey, Sims fans. It's really great to be here today. Uh, I'm Graham. Thank you for that wonderful intro, Ryan. And uh, like Ryan mentioned, we've got a ton of awesome stuff to show you. Um, we're really going to be focusing on one specific feature in Island Paradise today, just because we are still so early in development. If you turned into our previous live broadcast, you would have seen our world first announcement of The Sims 3 Island Paradise. And we saw one screenshot at that time. So today you're gonna to get a much closer look. We're actually gonna demo the game, uh, demo it live in game for you. Um, so we're gonna jump in there in just a moment. But first I wanna give a little disclaimer. Just because we are so early in development and we've never actually shown an expansion this early before, um, you are going to see a lot of work that's still in development. Uh, we are pre-alpha right now, and the build that we're showing you today is actually about two weeks old. Uh, I really wish I could show you like what's up on my work PC right now, because the progress we've made over that time has just been incredible. Uh, but you're still going to see some amazing stuff today. So uh, with that said, if you see a little oddity, uh, any strange things in today's build, that's to be expected at this point in development. We've got a long way to go on this expansion, but we're adding a ton of cool stuff. So with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump in game and uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, what you're gonna see. Now, uh, here we are, and uh, this is your first look at the world. And uh, like I mentioned, just as I pan around here, you're gonna start to get a sense of, you know, what we're going for with the theme, but it's still very early. So. A lot of the terrain is still being built out. We're still painting the landscape. A lot of that kind of lush tropical uh, plant life is gonna be added later on. So this is still very much in development. But as we uh, come closer here, we're gonna get our first look at a port. And uh, a port is gonna be a new type of lot that's really your connection between the land and the sea uh, for players who live on the new houseboats. And uh, these are only gonna get better over time. Um, you can see I've built out a little dock here, but we're actually going to add stuff like stilted foundations to the game. Uh, we want to give people the ability to build harbors or even create their own houses or buildings out over the water. Uh, so that's really going to be exciting when you see that. It's just not in-game yet. <laughs> and then over here, of course, is my houseboat. Uh, houseboats is one of the huge new features that we're so excited about for Island Paradise. Uh, of course, you've never seen anything like this in a Sims game before. And as I kind of go through here, you can see there's, you know, it's it's just like a normal home. Um, even though we're out over the water here, you can still do all the things that you could do in a normal Sim home. Um, just, you know, in the relaxing setting of a houseboat, which is really cool. 
So uh, let's have our Sims uh, enjoy a couple drinks here as we get started, because, yeah. you know, that's how I like to start my island uh, vacations. But uh, you can see, you know, we're on this houseboat. They're kind of living on this hull next to the dock. And even as we go through here, because you're on that hull, you have to be a little uh, a little smart in how you lay out your home. Uh, because I don't have a ton of room here, so I've got my kitchen all built out. I've got a fully functional living room with a fireplace. Over here I have a bar for entertaining guests. I've got a little study set up. So it's going to be a fun challenge for players who, you know, like to get in there, like to play with the build tools, and uh, just, you know, be make some cool layouts for their homes. So I'm going to send Felix up to the roof here because we're going to get this voyage underway shortly. Uh, and I think Katarina, she's enjoying her drink. But, you know, uh, before we get this voyage going, I think she's going to want to watch some TV. And uh, just as our Sims move around here, again, you can see how this is a fully functional home. Uh, despite being out over the water, you know, you can still navigate around the household just in all the ways that you normally would and enjoy a full life with your Sims. So uh, let's turn the TV on here. We'll get something exciting on. Oh, you know, of course, I'm doing a demo and the TV's broken, but that's okay. We'll call the repair technician and uh, we'll get somebody out here to fix this up because I've got a special little <laughs> romantic moment in mind for Valentine's Day later on. <laughs> so as soon as she gets him on the phone, uh, let's send her out to relax on this nice lounge chair in the meantime and enjoy the view. And it looks like our repair technician will come in about an hour. But, you know, I, I just, I want to get out. I want to hit the open water. So I think he'll catch up to us in a little bit. Now, this is a really exciting moment. You've never seen anything like this in The Sims. I'm going to pull my houseboat away from the dock. And you can see you have full freedom with your houseboats. You can go anywhere, do anything. There's no limits. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, that's my port right now. But I don't have to stay there. Uh, there's going to be multiple ports throughout the world on all the different islands. And you can direct your houseboat to go to any of them at any time. Um, and it's just, it's really cool to see. And uh, one of the nice things about it is we wanted to bring a real sense of, you know, the world being alive around you. So other Sims are going to be living on their houseboats as well. And you'll actually see them move around and drive their boats to different ports as well. So uh, it's going to be very cool. Now, the houseboats simply aren't all about having the gameplay of a normal sim home. Again, this gives you all the functionality of a normal household. So even while I'm driving my houseboat around in the ocean, I can switch into build mode or buy mode at any time and fully edit my houseboat. So I'm thinking, you know, a little extra safety on a boat's always a good thing. So I'm gonna grab my life preserver here and plop another one on the wall and I actually have a problem with this houseboat. You know, I was talking about the layout a little bit earlier, and it's a little tricky, but as I designed this thing, I found I didn't have room for a full bathroom. You know, you can look in there, it's a pretty tight squeeze. Up on the second floor, I've got my bedroom, and then of course a place to relax up on the deck. But I really do need that bathroom, so why don't I drop down one of our new objects? the all-in-one bathroom. <laughs> now, I love this thing. It is so convenient. I'm just going to plop it down right there in a little nook behind the staircase. And as we peek inside there, you can see you're going to be able to take care of all your hygiene and all your bladder needs for your Sims. Uh, and I actually, I love this thing so much. I've started placing it in all of my households. It's just, it's really cool. It's a fun little toy. And one of the other nice things that we're adding uh, we're actually bringing ladders into the game, so you're not going to need those staircases taking up all that room. Uh, ladders are going to be a great way to build on houseboats. And I think in behind here, we've got our repairman showing up. He's uh, pulling up on a speedboat, so I'm actually going to switch over to Katarina here and uh, go greet him as he comes to fix my TV. Uh, that's the really cool thing. I mean, even when you're out on a houseboat, you're not isolated in any way. You can certainly kind of get away from it all and enjoy your privacy away from civilization. But at the same time, you're not cut off. If you ever want your friends to come over and visit you, if you want to throw a party on your houseboat, or maybe you need some services like getting your TV repaired or having the firefighter show up, they'll just hop on a boat and come out and see you. So it's still really cool and a very convenient way to live. So uh, hopefully she's going to take care of this TV for me. And um, I'm going to have Felix route us somewhere else. I want to 
I want to head off in the distance here, go find some islands. <laughs> Is our TV working yet? I really want to, I want to show that off later. But one of the cool things, especially when you zoom in here, you start to really get that immersive feeling of being on a boat, being out over the water, uh, as you can kind of see the scenery go by in the windows outside. And it's just, it's really neat to see. And it uh, looks like we got our TV fixed, but it's such a lovely day outside. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. And I think we'll go fishing instead. That sounds like a great way to spend my afternoon. So uh, we'll send Katarina down. Yes, thanks for fixing the TV. <laughs> and uh, let's go fishing outside because this is just a beautiful day. And I want something fresh to throw on the grill later. It's going to be really nice. So you can see our port in the background over there, where uh, where we started the broadcast. We're way off in the distance now, and uh, I'm actually I'm going to speed up a little bit because I never know how long it takes for her to catch a fish. But I really want something fresh to throw on that grill later. But it's just really nice. I mean, the convenience of being able to kind of drop what you're doing and just go fishing at any point. You don't have to go search for a fishing hole or find a lake. Um, it's just the convenience of walking out your front door and uh, dropping your fishing line. It's really cool. Ooh, and we caught a nice one. I think that is going to grill up perfectly. So uh, let's send her upstairs to start a barbecue up on the roof. And we'll have her chop that up for us. Come on, Katarina. That's enough fishing. You got a big one. Don't be greedy. <laughs> but again, you're just kind of seeing how everything that you could do on a normal home, you can certainly do on your houseboat. So uh, she'll come out back here and prepare these ingredients for us. And this is just going to get my taste buds flowing. We are about an hour and a half away from lunchtime ourselves. I might have to grab a little seafood today for myself. <laughs> so we'll get a little salt and pepper, season that thing just right. Some lemon juice. Mmm. And she's going to carry that upstairs for us. And uh, while she's throwing some food on the grill, I'm going to get this stereo going. Because i got to say, you know, when you're kind of sailing in these beautiful tropics, there's nothing that kind of complements the scene. Like a little Latin music playing on the stereo. It's just, it's the perfect touch for me. Really puts me in the mood. <laughs> Let's get this grill going here. Oh, that's going to be delicious. <laughs> yeah, you might want to keep your face out of the smoke. Come on, Katarina. <laughs> and uh, here's Felix. You know, we can see how he's actually driving the houseboat around. And you have full ability to go anywhere you want with your houseboat. Uh, you know, as soon as he's piloting the ship, I can at any time direct him to, you know, kind of change course or go to a different place. Wherever I want to be, uh, my houseboat can take me, which is just awesome. Oops, still had Katarina there. <laughs> and I think our fish is just going to be about done. And I definitely want Felix to have a bite. So I'm actually going to drop anchor right here and uh, let them share a nice little meal together. You grab a plate, you grab a plate, and we are going to share a delicious dinner. Now, is this not just the perfect setting? Looking out over this beautiful ocean enjoying some fresh fish that you just caught, grilling it up, having that Latin music on the stereo. It just, it really sets the scene. It's a nice Valentine's Day moment as well. Um, you know, I wish this is something I could be going home and doing this afternoon, but uh, that's okay. I love being here on the broadcast with you guys. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of one of those nice things. You know, you get to share this private moment. You're away from everybody. It's a, it's really a great thing to experience in game. And again, you've never seen anything like this before in a Sims game. So as they kind of finish their meal here, uh, I think we'll get a little, a little dancing going. That'll be a great way to cap off our, uh, our tasty meal. No dishes. Who wants to wash dishes? We don't do that when we're uh, out enjoying the water. Ooh, poor Katarina. Ooh, I didn't get to her in time. She just, uh, she had a little accident. You know, instead of dancing, let's send her down to use the all-in-one bathroom. Uh, she's feeling a little stinky, so we can get that cleared right up for her. No, no dancing. Come on, Sims, you gotta listen to me. <laughs> oh, he's about to have an accident, too. Let's, let's solve this a better way. I'm gonna have Felix use the all-in-one bathroom, and Katarina... She can just take a dip in the ocean to clean up. 
that's one of the great benefits of being out on the water. You know, you've got it there, you might as well use it. So at any point, I can just jump off the back of my houseboat and go for a swim, which is really nice. <laughs> Gotta get that stink cloud off of you. So, of course, for uh, all of you who are familiar with The Sims 3 Seasons, which was our most recently released expansion pack, we added the ability for all of our players to go out swimming in the ocean and really start to have fun out there. But that's a concept that we're really going to explore further in The Sims 3 Island Paradise. We're now, we've opened up the ocean, and now we're bringing you all the awesome activities and fun stuff that you can do on it. So I'm swimming out here, but of course some of the stuff that we're bringing into the game is stuff like snorkeling and scuba diving. And Ryan's going to talk a little bit more about that in detail in a minute, but it's going to be awesome to see. So uh, we'll get her back on the houseboat. I think Felix is probably feeling a little better. Yeah, he, he got to use that all-in-one bathroom perfectly. And, you know, it's getting a little later in the afternoon. Things are starting to cool off, so I think I'll get them into some warmer clothes here. And of course, all the clothes you're seeing today are new and coming with the Island Paradise, so lots of great stuff there. There we go, that's looking a little better. And uh, why don't we have them relax on the, uh, on the bed together. Now that we got that uh, TV fix earlier, we can definitely enjoy a, a little special moment together. <laughs> so uh, here we go. I want to get that TV on and we'll enjoy a nice little Valentine's Day moment. And what do you know? How convenient is that? We're already tuned into the Romantic Rendezvous channel, which is uh, just perfect for our little paradise here. So I'm going to have my Sims cuddle, really enjoy themselves. Yeah, that's lovely. And then maybe a little makeout session, something special for Valentine's Day. <laughs> So you can see, when you're out in your houseboat, you know, kind of isolated, cut off from the world, do whatever you want with your sims, have a fun time, enjoy a special Valentine's Day together. And uh, that's kind of all we're showing for Island Paradise today. Uh, we're going to leave them alone, have, let them have a little privacy. Uh, and you can kind of see what we're doing with the world here. All these cool new islands that you're going to get to discover, uh, totally unlike anything that you've ever seen in The Sims before. So. I hope you've enjoyed what we've shown today. This is going to be how you're going to get to live in your own island paradise, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, and that is going to come out this June worldwide. So I'm going to kick it back over to Ryan for right now, and then we're going to have a little question and answer session. So take it away, Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. That is looking amazing. I can't tell you how great it's looking, especially considering it's not even coming out until June. So great work on that. Sims on houseboats, could you want anything more? Well, it looks like my question and answer cover it live feed is blowing up. You guys have tons of questions. So I think we're gonna pick a few out for Graham. I don't think we're gonna be able to answer all of them. You guys have lots of great questions, uh, but let's jump into it. So Graham, uh, the first question comes from cover it live um, and they ask, will the seasons change on the islands that come in this expansion? So all of the options that came with The Sims 3 Seasons are still going to be available to you in Island Paradise. So all of the things that you'd expect from that game, the rain, the fog, the snow, the hail, it's all going to happen in Island Paradise if you want it to. Now, obviously, with it being kind of this Caribbean tropical setting, you might not want that heavy winter. You might not want to see a blizzard in the world. So some of the options that came with that game let you turn off a particular season. So you could just skip winter. Or you could still have some cooler temperatures and just prevent it from snowing. But you're still going to have all of that functionality in Island Paradise. That sounds great. Another question coming from Twitter this time, and this is a really good one, I think. <laughs> uh, what if one sim wants to leave, but the other sim wants to stay in the water? You know, what happens if my sim jumps off into the ocean and then my other sim decides to head off, head away in the houseboat? Well, what I would suggest is keeping your sims together because that wouldn't be very nice to leave one sim swimming out in the middle of nowhere and just take your houseboat and book it out of there. But if you do like to mess with your sims, if you do want to do that, uh, good luck having them swim and try and catch up with the boat. One of the nice things that you can do, though, is the new smaller watercraft in the game, you know, things like the speedboats or 
I believe Ryan just mentioned jet skis for the first time yesterday. Uh, those are kind of like typical vehicles that Sims already have. Now, they aren't restricted to any particular roads, but you can have them in your inventory and access them at any time. So if you found your Sims kind of stranded out in the ocean like that, they could hop into their speedboat, catch up to the houseboat, and then they'd be good to go. So from what I understand, Graham, not only can I woohoo out on the water in my houseboat, <laughs> but I can strand my entire household out there as one of my Sims drives away. Sounds awesome. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, the great stuff about that is, you know, I said how the ports are kind of the connection between land and sea. And you can dock your houseboat there and have it be just as convenient to access the mainland as a normal house. But the great thing about houseboats is they don't have to be at that port. If you take it out in the ocean and just drop anchor, you can stay out there, live out there anywhere you want to be. It's very cool. That sounds fantastic. All right. Another question coming in. This one is from Cover It Live. So many great questions. Uh, this one is, can you build a basement on your houseboat? What happens if you want to try and do that? So again, the houseboats are going to have, you know, all the functionality of the normal home. So if you want to build a basement, you actually can. Um, you saw that hull that my houseboat was built on, and you can build down into that hull with a basement that's one layer deep. Uh, just, you know, put some living quarters down there. Uh, it's, it's a nice way kind of uh, to have additional space on your boat. But they are fully built by structures. You can customize them however you like. Um, that entire building that was on the outside of my houseboat, you can build that. You can change it. It's entirely up to you. We're not we're not placing you in a box. We're giving you an open box to do whatever you want to do with. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Again, cannot believe how awesome houseboats are. You can drive <laughs> anywhere in the world. You can dive off, go swimming, go fishing, as you guys saw. Uh, and that world is looking amazing too. Can you? Uh, this question is actually coming in from Cover It Live as well. Uh, can you give us any more info on the world, what the, the makeup is? Uh, we had lots of questions at the community day yesterday about the number of islands. Can you share anything with us? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the world. Um, you know, the first point I, I just want to mention again, what you saw in the demo was still very early. And I know some people have seen early screenshots or, you know, a little of the talk about what's come out so far and said, hey, that, you know, that looks unfinished. And yeah, that's because it is unfinished. Uh, we've got a long way to go in development on this one. But even what's in the world already is so cool and so different from anything you've seen before. Um, we've always had, you know, one connected piece of land uh, in our world. And maybe if you've played Sunlit Tides, you started to see a few little disconnected islands because we added that ability to go swimming in the ocean. So you could go out, you know, maybe do a sandbar and explore a little. But we're completely blowing that out of the water with Island Paradise. We've got tons of different islands to go out and explore. So we kind of have the big main one and then lots of little satellite islands that you can go and visit. And there'll certainly be lots and homes spread out over the different islands. And it's still going to be really convenient to go travel between them now that we've added all these boats. So the experience is going to be a really kind of refreshing one um, where it's going to change the way you play the game. So amazing. I'm just blown away every time I hear that, you know, the amount of worlds or excuse me, the amount of islands and the fact that you can go wherever you want just sounds great. Uh, so, Graham, I've got a question that keeps coming up over and over again on Cover It Live. I think the majority of the questions might be this one. Do you have a Valentine today? <laughs> oh, boy. I, I don't know how to best answer that for a broadcast. I, I do have a Valentine today. Um you know, I'm up here at work. I'm sharing the day with everybody, but uh, and it's nice being on this broadcast, I'll say. But I'm hoping that we don't run this too long today because I do want to get home at some point and uh, spend that with a special somebody. <laughs> Lots of broken hearts out there, Graham. Lots <laughs> of broken hearts. All right. I think we have time for one last question. You guys, keep them coming. There's lots of great stuff. We're going to be answering questions throughout the broadcast. Uh, I think we're going to answer one more and then move on to what we got up next. So, uh, this is the, the last question on houseboats, and I think it's a really good one. We saw uh, we saw a kind of a small houseboat there. Are there going to be more sizes? Yeah, there will be multiple sizes for the houseboat. So the one we actually showed in the demo today, that is the smallest houseboat hull that's going to be available in-game. 
Um, just because we are still in development and we're still making kind of a lot of choices and decisions about this expansion, I don't want to go into the exact number that are going to be available in the final release, but there will be multiple houseboat sizes. So, you know, no matter if you want that small one, and even then you can see I could build out a fully functional home or, you know, really blow it out with this grand yacht. Uh, you're going to be able to really customize it, have a lot of options available to you. Um, so it's going to be very cool to see. Thanks, Graham. That sounds great. The Sims 3 Island Paradise launching this June. Really appreciate you coming on to show us uh, show us that demo. I'm sure we'll have more to come in the future. All right, guys. Uh, so The Sims 3 Island Paradise is not just houseboats. It is a huge pack. It's still in development, but there's lots of other big features coming along, too. For the first time ever, you're going to take your Sims underwater for scuba diving. And I'm not just talking about sending your Sims underwater while your camera stays up top and you see them kind of go beneath the waves. No, you're going to go down underneath the ocean all on your own. You can follow your Sim down there. Lots of new collectibles, things to see, and maybe some underwater wildlife coming your way. But that's not all. The Sims 3 Island Paradise also introduces resort building and resort management. So depending on what your idea of Island Paradise is, you're going to be able to build a stilt hut on the beach or maybe even a mega complex resort with water slides, waterfalls, and all the amenities that go into mega resorts. It's looking awesome. And this pack really allows you to control what Island Paradise means to you. Whether your idea is getting by on a uh, deserted island or living in the lap of luxury in a ginormous resort, you get to choose and you get to play with life how you want. So it's a great pack. Uh, it's coming out on June 25th. But as you guys have seen, today, starting today, you can now pre-order The Sims 3 Island Paradise on Origin.com. Uh, we've got a really special, uh, register or very special limited edition uh, only available through pre-ordering, and uh, there's a really cool content pack that's coming with this. We'll have some more details in the future, so make sure to stay tuned. Uh, but the limited edition, if you pre-order now, is looking awesome. I uh, hope you guys go out and uh, take a peek at it on Origin.com. All right, moving right along. As I mentioned earlier, I have my colleagues from the Sims 3 store, uh, Amy, My Amy Meyer? No. no. Megan Myers, excuse me, lots of names, lots, so many sim gurus on today. Megan Myers uh, is here to show us uh, the brand new world along with Lisa Smith. Uh, the new digital world available from the Sims 3 store is called Aurora Skies and it's looking amazing. I've never seen uh, a Sims 3 world looking so great. It's really cool. Uh, there's some really big, uh, really big new stuff they're seeing in it. So I think we're ready. Take it away, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. I'm Lisa. And I'm Megan, and we're here from the Sims 3 sh store, man, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> to uh, show you our brand new world, Aurora Skies. So we've got a video ready to show you, Lisa? Yep. Okay. Um, so the, you might notice that there's no sound in this video. Don't, don't freak out. That's how we wanted it. This is really just to show you the beautiful sky. And this is, you know, Aurora Skies. Obviously, it's named after the sky and what a sky it is. Um, and if Lisa's going to tell you a little bit more about the sky in a second, but um, I just wanted to say, if you have any questions right now about our world or as we're doing our demo, feel free to start posting them to Twitter or on Cover It Live, and we'll answer some after we're done. So Lisa, do you want to tell us a little bit about the sky here? Yeah, so as you can see, Aurora Skies has a custom Aurora night sky. As Megan said, it makes sense why we named it that. Um, we um, created this because we were really trying to capture the natural beauty of I'm going to go ahead and tell you one of our inspirations was Iceland for this world. Um, so we were trying hard to capture that type of natural beauty of something more in the north. Um, this is our uh, eco-friendly, quaint coastal town. Um, it has a, it focuses a lot on the environment and scientific advancement. And um, that's pretty much it. I hope you love the sky. We do. That's the geothermal lake that we're seeing right now, That right? is our geothermal lake. And we have some waterfalls and fjords that feed into it. This is some of my favorite parts, so I just want to make sure that we're all seeing it. <laughs> I'm like, you see beautiful. the waterfall? <laughs> it's so beautiful. Okay. okay. So now that you've seen a little bit of the sky, let's go ahead and show you a couple of screenshots that we have of um, some of the amazing rabbit holes that we created just for this world. So this is a shot of the Aurora Skies in the day. As you can see from the Sims, the size of the Sims versus the size of the waterfall, the waterfalls are really quite huge. 
um, you'll get a really good sense of scale when you start to play this game that the, the nature really is sort of the focal point. So this is our hospital science rabbit hole. It's called the Cure-All Collective. This is where all the best minds of Aurora Skies come for all the scientific and medical advancements for the world. Um, as you guys are probably aware, there is one rabbit hole per world that we give a little more time and love and care to, and this is it, this is the one. Um, it's really a fantastic, sleek, modern-looking building, and we're very proud of it. It's quite beautiful. So this is the Peaceful Protection Agency, which combined the military and police rabbit holes. So uh, they combine their resources, but you know it's okay because there's honestly not a lot of crime in Aurora Skies. This is the stadium. So the only teams that you'll ever see play in the stadium is the Aurora Skies versus the Aurora Moons. They would love to take on more competitors if anyone could figure out how to get to Aurora Skies, which is Very really quite cool. sad because the Aurora Suns are a talented team. Okay, so this is plays, productions, and pictures. Um, all of the art performances are housed here, and it is the place to be on a Saturday night in Aurora Skies. This is our new mausoleum. So a lot of people in the forums saw this in a distance in a screenshot and were trying to guess just what it was. It is our brand new mausoleum. Um, the Morningside Mortuary and Morgue ensures that your passed on loved ones have the best waterfall views in Aurora Skies because their ghosts really need it. So uh, this is just an abandoned warehouse in the woods. Nothing bad ever happens here. Nothing to see here. I think we'll actually just move on. <laughs> Um, I, this is our new diner and grocery. Um, it actually has a train car inside the building. It gives a sort of an old timey feel while still having modern architecture. This is our brand new school. The Nature and Nurture Academy has teachers that encourage their students to go out and really learn what they can from nature without getting poisoned. Oh, and these are hot air balloons. The Yay! new premium content for Aurora Sky. <laughs> <laughs> They're so beautiful. I'm super excited about them. And for all of you folks who have seasons, this is a quick shot of what Aurora Skies looks like mired in snow. Um, as you can see, it's, it's gorgeous. So if you have seasons, definitely look at this world. <laughs> okay, so now that we've shown you a couple screens of the rabbit holes, let's go ahead and jump in the game. And we'll give you a quick tour of the world now. We'll show off some of that premium content you just saw. Yes, we will. Um, so I will go ahead and start now. All right, do it, Lisa. So this is Aurora Skies. As you can see, we've mentioned those gorgeous fjords. They are indeed a large part of this world. Again, we focus a lot on the nature. As a part, if you aren't very familiar with worlds, uh, it is a new environment for your Sims to play their story. Um, so we've had Italy, we've had Palm Springs, we've had tropical islands. Um, if you want to tell your story in a new location, our worlds give you a new place to do it. So we focus a little more on the environment um, in our worlds. Um, so this is a verse, guys, as, I mean, <laughs> we've already given you the breakdown of what it does. So let's skip all this and jump right into the premium content. We know it's what you all want to see. Yeah, we know that's what you came here for. It's okay. You don't want to see us. You're like, show us the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> what a balloon it is. I'm really excited. So this is Simon and Erica, and they've been dating for a while, but Simon has decided that it's time to take the next step, and he wants to propose. So the hot air balloon... It is Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day, <laughs> and this is actually the perfect premium content for it. So the hot air balloon um, is the best for romance. All of your romantic interactions have a significantly higher chance of succeeding in the hot air balloon. So we're going to go ahead and prepare for takeoff. Scroll out a little bit so you can see it launch. And these balloons are fully recolorable. You do not have to keep the same pattern, the same colors, the same basket. Um, you can make it what you want. So uh, Erica thinks that they're just here for a bit of a sightseeing trip, but um, Simon wants to make it more romantic. So they started their sightseeing and he decides that he wants to have a drink. Liquid courage. Everyone needs a little liquid courage with nectar every now and again. <laughs> so he's getting it all set up while she sightsees. She's very excited about the prospect. Come on, Simon. You can do it. <laughs> and they're going to enjoy a romantic oh, game together. There it is. It bubbles. It pours. Aww. Clink. Aww. <laughs> so cute. 
So now that the drink is nearing its end and they're having their romantic moment, you know, Erica's going to go back to sightseeing thinking, hey, you know, th- we're done. We we had our moment. I'm enjoying uh, my time. Uh, you see, there is a new move that glorious view that comes with the hot air balloon. But Simon's ready. He's got his liquid courage. Come on, Simon. He's getting it together. You can do it. <laughs> and he's going to... Uh, uh. Wait for it. <laughs> Pull out the box. Very shiny. Watering. And of course, she accepts. So it, it's a, there is a chance of the proposal not being accepted, but it's so rare in the hot air balloon. I've never seen it, and you probably never will. Because <laughs> all of your romances really do have a significantly higher chance of succeeding with a balloon. So if you want to shoot someone from we've just started dating on to getting engaged, this is the way to do it. Um, so Erica is so excited by being a newly engaged woman that she wants to have perhaps a little more fun in the balloon. The hot air balloon does come with a brand new woohoo that they will get started. <laughs> And upon completion of the woohoo, there is a brand new movie called The Basket Club. It's like the Mile High Club, but significantly better because it's in a basket. Um, you get plus 50 mood uh, for 12 hours with this. And ah, there wow, go. there they go. So we're going to leave them to that. Let them have a little bit of privacy. And now seems the perfect time to show you off all the awesome objects coming in the world. So let's scoot on over. Who are we going to visit here, Megan? Okay, so this is the Beaker family. Some of you guys might um, recognize that name from Sims 2. Um, Before the family moved over to Strangetown, they actually lived in Aurora Skies. So Lisa has done a little bit of remodeling in their house. She asked them, and they said they they were okay with it just for the broadcast. (laughs) Just for the broadcast. Um, So she's going to show off a couple of the new objects that come with Aurora Skies. I mean, this is not what the Beaker's house normally looks like. uh, (laughs) I did have to demolish almost all of their entire second floor. Um, So you guys did guess on the forums. A lot of people guessed that it might have been the Beaker's based on the locale, and you were totally right. Um, They are our legacy family, and they are fantastic to play. Um, so here are our new items in the world, and I'm excited to show them all. We have four new paintings, and we were going with a modern, minimalistic look with all of the objects in this world. So you'll see things with clean lines, a lot of simplicity, um, and a, a very modern avant-garde look. So we have the four new paintings here. We have this lovely ga- glass cabinet, which I've recolored over here to show you the type of flexibility you can get. The inner panels, the drawer, the outer panels. Um, as well, we have a new wall clock. <laughs> and <That's exciting. laughs> yeah, frankly that is because i get really sick of using the same clocks so i asked them to make a clock for me um there we do have five new wallpapers and again to show you the flexibility this is actually the way it looks in the beaker's house it's a color variation of this floor wallpaper so there's a lot you can do with them to make them your own uh, we have a new wooden bathtub this glass pedestal to show off all of your artwork a brand new shaker chair and this coffee table is not as much a coffee table as much it is a table to go along with our brand new sectional. It's really cool. It can be used in two ways. It can be used in two ways. So you either tie it with the couch or tie it alone. We have the full sectional set, left, right, convex, concave, and the you middle can make pieces. Crazy snake uh, arrangements like <laughs> Fill Lisa's your done. Entire <laughs> room with sectionals. Um, we have a brand new fireplace, which I'm incredibly excited about because it's the first time we've done one in the world. Um, so it's our new fireplace to go along with it. So let's pop. Oh, my favorite Wait, thing. I, I know. I almost forgot my literal <laughs> favorite out. object. Lisa and I are both really excited about these shelves. Over these here. shelves. Um, so I'm going to go into buy mode to show you just how we can customize these shelves. I love these things. Um, so we wanted to create a set where you could make a wall of art of your own without it looking like you're pasting the same items again and again. So this is highly customizable and all of the items that have the same colors will shift together. Uh, so we'll make those red, we'll make those orange, we'll make those some variation of white. Uh, the other benefit that I absolutely love is that they stack together. So you pull one up the wall, grab another one, pull that one down the wall, grab another one, and stick it in. And you have a fully customizable wall of art. It's pretty sweet looking. I love it. (laughs) Because you're always trying to create some semblance of a curio case or a trophy thing without um, 
using the move objects on sheets, and this is one way that you can do that. I'd also like to show you our brand new plans. We have five. Uh, we have the lovely Lupin, as you can see, are completely resizable. We have new Angelica plants. These are big, fluffy juniper bushes. Make sure you have space for these. You can see they're, they're pretty big. Uh, we have this white birch tree, which I absolutely love. It really does change its look and shape depending on how you turn it. So you can create a really great foresty feel on your lot. And this red rowan tree, which actually comes with these rowan berries. I love it. It really does give a type of fur look. Um, I love the rowan tree. And here is my balloon, completely recolored. Um, it shows a little, uh, some flexibility in the way that you can color the balloon. You do not have to go with a band. You can have n nothing. Pink balloon. You can have a ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have a pink balloon, but we can I use would. a pink balloon. Um, it can have a band. It can have a ribbon. It's fully customizable that way. Um, so that's it for our objects. We do have a lot of cast, uh, but we're a little limited on time today, so we won't be able to show it. But stay tuned to Megan and my Twitter pages because we'll be releasing screenshots of all of the cast in the next couple of days. Yeah, be sure to ask us all your questions. But we do you know what? we have saved some time by not doing the cast, so we're going to show you uh, the venue that comes with the gold version of this world. Uh, yes. Lisa's getting it ready. It's called the Tiny Prodigies Early Learning Center. And if you guys love playing toddlers as much as I love playing toddlers, uh, you are really, really going to enjoy this venue. Um, so just by itself, it's a beautiful, beautiful venue. Lisa, do you have it ready? You want to start showing it? I do. I have temporarily made this a venue um, just so I can have a family around. They are, of course, not home. Those lasses. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I can talk a little bit about it while Lisa gets it all set up. Um, so... Again, like I said, it's a gorgeous venue. The outside, um, it looks very modern. I'm, I'm really bad at architecture, but it looks very modern to me. <laughs> it looks it's modern. Got, it's got some beautiful glass windows. Here you go. Here you can see this it. This is what it looks like. It looks like inside. a place you would want to send your children to learn something, right? It looks very educational, I think. Um, so it's got a number of different rooms, the number of different focuses. So basically, whatever your Sims are what? into, they can do here. There's a pool for your more athletic Sims. There's some chess tables and a um, a telescope for your more logic-oriented sims. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to tell him to bring his toddler home and not leave him in a park. Is, <laughs> is there something He's about the sims where they always try to leave their children in public places? Sims are not very good parents. I never but don't really worry. Understood. This venue is going to help you with that. Speaking of uh, neglectful parents. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want me to? I'll just keep talking. You just don't worry about it. <laughs> So um, there's other there's a number of other places like I was saying the um, for your Sims to do some things. There's outdoor areas. There's a playground in the back. If your Sims like the outdoors, they can go there and start oh, and play. Mom's already home. Um, there's a couple of rooms for your parents. So basically, the idea behind this venue is that it's a learn it's an early learning center. So you would bring your child and toddler Sims to this place to get some extra extracurricular activities going on. Like they can do some learning outside of school. While we're waiting for Dad to bring Terry home, let's go ahead and walk you through the objects that come with this world. Uh, with the venue, I'm sorry. You already saw the objects that come with the world. Uh, we do have uh, four new rugs. One that looks like a fantastic board game. This floral one, puzzles, and woodland animals. Um, I love this woodland animal rug. It's really cute. I probably shouldn't love it as much. Um, let's turn on the lights in this room so you can see. We have a brand new rocking chair. Definitely more of a modern artistic look for our rocking chair. Uh, this is the Whoa. playpen and the walker that you will see in action very shortly. That's a pretty neat concept. We, we have <laughs> our new cubby, uh, which is the your way of collecting your uh, child's folderol, and a brand new refrigerator, which does have several variations, so you can display the art either on front or slightly on the side. Um, so those what are our new place objects. To show off your children's art, right? Now that they've just the family has decided to come home, let's take a look at our new premium content. So he's going to put Chuck in the playpen. Okay, so as Lisa just showed you, um, we have two premium content items that come with the gold version of this world and in this venue. So they are the Head Start playpen and the Local Motion Toddler Walker. So these are really, really fun items. Um, as you can see, you can put your toddler in the playpen. And... Sorry, our children need something to do. They're so bored by the front door. 
So you can put your toddler in the playpen, and they can actually do a couple of different things. They can. There's a mirror in there, so they can learn to talk. Look how adorable that is! Sorry. Or you're describing me, I'm like, look how cute! Um, so you can, the toddlers in the playpen can learn to talk with the mirror, so they'll basically teach themselves to talk. Um, so that's really exciting for me, I know. My sins always took forever to teach my toddlers to talk, but now they can do it in the playpen, which is really awesome. So now that he's done, let's have him go to the mirror to learn to talk. They will route to whatever mirrors is close to whatever mirror is closest to them, and of course it's the one on the side for him. You see him practicing talking by himself while she's playing with her mother. So let's have Carrie play with the abacus. And the abacus does what, maybe? The abacus will actually teach your toddler logic. So your toddlers can learn logic skill while um, in the playpen. I like to think that they're learning calculus, you know, because of course, right? <laughs> My three year olds are gonna tiny, prodigy. tiny prodigies, right? Well, gotta be learning calculus. Uh, but they're at least learning something. So it's really exciting. And then um, the other thing is that in the mirror, once you, your toddler has learned to talk, they can then use the mirror to actually boost up some charisma skill. So they won't actually get the charisma skill until they are teenagers, but they will be building it as toddlers. And that is, is awesome. the coolest thing because this is the earliest that you've been able to learn that skill with toddlers. We've had logic and art before with the previous toys, but this is the first time that you've been able to learn charisma that early. So now that we have Carrie in hand, let's go ahead and put her in the walker. Oh no, but everyone has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's okay, we're gonna be really quick. I know, I'm like, sorry. Sorry, Sims. You have to hold it. Um, so let's have, <laughs> almost done. Just hold it in. Let's have mom get out of the way so we can watch Carrie play. It's really adorable. And this playtime is actually having them raise handiness skill. Again, you'll get it as a child, like when you get logic and art uh, previously, but this is raising their handiness skill, and the more they play with it, the higher it goes. Um, I believe it caps out about level three or four? I think that's right. So let's have her walk. That's yes. really the most exciting part. So again, just like teaching your toddlers to talk, they can learn to walk all by themselves in the toddler walker. It's super cute and super what helpful. What about? She's teaching herself to walk. All right, I hope you guys love these as much as I do. I can watch this all day. We were literally staring at this for a while. We're like, look at them go! Oh my god, it's so good. Okay, I think we're maybe gonna take some questions now. Yeah, I think right? we should. We should everybody? Let's take a couple questions. All right. So guys, let me get this straight. This world comes with a hot air balloon that increases the chance of successful romantic socials like Woohoo and a bunch of toddler content? Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm like, oh. Well, like, Where's this question going? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that is a coincidence. Yeah. 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 Honestly, I mean, we were... The toddler stuff, we were... I'm, I'll admit, I love toddler stuff. I like playing with toddlers more than I like playing I with any other sins. Stuff. Um, and then we had a really great reaction to the toddler set that we released on the store earlier and people kept saying well, can we have more can we have more so we are really excited to be able to give you more um and we hope that you guys like this as, as well and learning to walk and talk is has always been really annoying after you played your sims about a million times which i have you just like literally as soon as they turn toddlers i sit them down that day and teach and them to walk and talk forever. and that's it you know you just you, it's not the same anymore <laughs> so having them wander alone is amazing it's really awesome well, I'm glad we were able to show it off on Valentine's Day, too. There's no coincidences <laughs> on Valentine's Day. All right, let's jump into some of the questions coming from Twitter and cover it live. Remember, if you have any questions about the stuff you're seeing on today's broadcast, you can use the cover it live box just below this window, as well as tweet us your questions at The Sims 3 using the The Sims 3 LB hashtag. We're going to answer as many as we can. There's tons flooding in. My Twitter feed is blowing up right now. Uh, so let's jump into some of your questions. This first one is coming from Cover It Live, and they ask, where was the inspiration for the buildings in Aurora Skies? Where did it come from? Um, so the inspiration was definitely more uh, Iceland, but for, for the rabbit holes, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, we, we definitely want to lean more towards a, a modern, sleek look. For the homes, it was more uh, Iceland, a little bit of Nova Scotia, as I mentioned before, some Scandinavian. Um, country, so the the boxy look and the colorful roofs are actually a part of that town. Um, so that was our inspiration there. 
It looks amazing. I have family that live in Norway and Denmark, and uh, sometimes they send me pictures of the fjords up there. It looks amazing, and I, I love seeing them in this world. It's, it's looking absolutely fantastic. All right, next question. This one is coming from Twitter, and uh, they ask, can we change the color of the hot air balloon? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so we showed that a little bit when we went to the Beaker's household, but um, the balloon is fully customizable. You can make it look almost however you want. You can't get rid of the basket. You have to sit somewhere. Um, you have to have a balloon and you have to have a basket. Yeah. But other than that, you can pretty much customize it. Other than the that, colors. you can you can make it yours. That sounds amazing. I love how you can customize everything about it, including the uh, the colors. And I, I think I saw some hearts in there and, and bows yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Great stuff for Valentine's Day, guys. Uh, it's looking awesome. All right. Uh, another question coming in from Simguru. Oh, let's see. This one is coming from Cover It Live. Uh, and they ask, uh, what is the gold version of Aurora Skies? What does that mean? What's what's the gold version all about? So the, for those who are fairly new to our world, um, we ha usually have a standard and a gold version. The gold version includes the venue. So you would have the Tiny Prodigies venue and the walker and the playpen. Those come in gold. And in standard, you would have just the Aurora Skies world and the hot air balloon. Um, they're, they're two separate products. Sounds awesome. Uh, well, I can't avoid this one because it's completely taking over the Twitter feed once again. You guys have any Valentines of your own today? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> what an awkward question. Um, um, yes, no, yeah, yes, yes, I, I do. Um, um, I'm very excited to have Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm actually out here at the uh, San Francisco studio for this broadcast, and my Valentine is a little annoyed by that. <laughs> he's understanding well I think uh, uh, at least myself I'm sure everybody on the feed really appreciates you guys being here today alright last question about the Sims 3 Aurora Skies uh, you guys talked a little bit about sharing some of the clothing uh, on your Twitter feeds can you give us any details right now you know lots of people are asking questions about what's coming in cast uh, can you share any details with us at this moment uh, yeah, we have a couple of details. We do have a couple, uh, couple new outfit options for women, um, and a couple for men, and actually a hairstyle for girls. Really cute. Um, and one of the things you may have heard me mention in the Monte Vista chat is that I really wanted a couple more elder options. Uh, so we made sure in this one that several of our options do transfer to elders. So if you're Elder Sim is in dire need of a makeover, which As they, all of ours are. They probably are. <laughs> <laughs> then you have a couple of options. We have several hairs and several outfits that are for elders as well. So I'm pretty excited to show them. That's fantastic again. Uh, so I actually have one more question because this keeps coming up as well. Is is, is the height of the hot air balloon limited to what you showed us on the, on the uh, demo? Or can it move around? Can it take your Sims places? So it can take your pl Sims places. It is a mode of transportation. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. It does take you from place to place, but it is limited in height to what you've seen in the broadcast. Yes. Hot air balloons and houseboats. You guys saw it all here first on the Sims 3 live broadcast. Thanks for being with us today, guys. Uh, the Sims 3 Aurora Skies Digital World is coming to the Sims 3 store in a, exactly a week from today on February 21st. So make sure to check it out. You guys saw it. It looks awesome. Uh, it's really looking great. All right, next up, we have a fresh demo of The Sims 3 University Life. Fred on, fresh off the press, ready to rock and roll. It's looking great. Uh, your guys' excitement for this pack has been awesome. Uh, I've been wanting this pack as well since The Sims 2. It's a great one. I mean, streaking through the quad and juice kegs, who could live without that? Uh, so they're going to get their set, demo set up right now. Uh, it's a really good one. But I wanted to tell you uh, about another game that's going to be launching next month as well. Sim City is coming back to the PC. Uh, this game is, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about it, and I wanted to let you guys know that as of right now, you have a chance to get one of the beta keys to play the game early. That's right, in just two days, February 16th, there's going to be a beta version of the game coming out, and you guys can be entered, will be randomly selected to get one of the beta keys right now. So please, if you're interested, tweet at The Sims 3 using the SimCity beta hashtag. You guys can fire those tweets off right now, and you can be randomly selected to be one of the first people ever to get in and play this game. I personally have been playing it over the last couple months and have been amazed at the progress that's that's been done to the build. 
The game is looking awesome, and I, myself, am a huge SimCity fan. Uh, actually, SimCity 2000 was one of my first favorite games I ever played. It's really looking, and th this new version that's now back on the CD uh, PC is really looking great. Uh, SimCity is uh, really simulated just down to every little detail, from the Sims who are walking around on the streets to uh, the power, water, and electricity that are flowing through the ground. Uh, so there's no faking it. I actually was talking to one of my friends, one of the developers on that team, uh, and they really said it. You know, said it best. What you see is what is being simmed. Uh, everything is, is really uh, kind of all connected. They're using the glass box engine to really drive their simulation, and it's looking great. So make sure to check that out. Uh, again, tweet us using the SimCityBeta hashtag. Again, that SimCityBeta hashtag to be randomly selected for a chance to play the game in two days on February 16th. It's awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to recap really quick what we've been talking about in the demo. We started or in the broadcast today. We started off with SimGuru Graham here to show us uh, The Sims 3 Island Paradise, which is going to be coming out uh, in June. It is looking phenomenal. You have houseboats, you have underwater diving, uh, you even have resort management where you're going to be able to run your resorts and build them to however uh, however you build a view Island Paradise. You can really set up your resorts to be a island bungalow. Uh, or a massive sprawling resort complex with water slides and uh, and waterfalls and your pools. Uh, it's really looking awesome. Then right after that, you guys just saw The Sims 3 Aurora Skies. Uh, it's looking fantastic as well. It's kind of set in a uh, northern kind of setting. It's got fjords. There's a, a geothermal lake, I think I heard. That's looking great as well. Um, so right now we're working on getting uh, the live broadcast set up uh, for The Sims 3 University Life. This pack is launching this month. Uh, it's looking really good. There's tons of brand new content. I'm sure anybody that played uh, University from The Sims 2 uh, is really going to enjoy this one. Uh, it's looking fantastic. There's tons of new content, new features. I, I myself, uh, the first time I played it, I was so excited to get in there. And I went to the new world where, uh, where you go to University. I decided oh, I'm not ready to register for classes yet. I took my Sims out. And I happened upon a house party. And there Sim was inviting me inside for a little juice pong. I checked out the juice keg. And maybe even a little streakers came through. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a great pack. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a message here. Um, I'm going to toss over to our producers who are here today. Uh, who are going to be showing us a little bit of the Sims 3 University life. I have Sim Guru Britt and uh, Sim Guru Lauren here to talk a little bit about university life which launches in just a couple weeks, guys. Get ready for it. Take it away. Hey, guys. Some Guru Britt here. Um, so actually, a little bit of bad news. We're having some technical difficulties with our setup here for the live broadcast. Um, so we're actually not going to be able to show you the university walkthrough that we wanted to today. But don't worry. Uh, since we're already here and uh, all dolled up and everything, uh, we decided maybe we'd stick around and answer some questions. Uh, we also, on our YouTube channel today, there's a uh, producer walkthrough video, uh, my producer walkthrough video, actually. It's pretty awesome. You guys should go and check that out. Uh, but so we're going to stick around maybe and answer some questions for Ryan. We will reschedule the live broadcast for university for another point. So check all of our feeds and we'll make sure and let you guys know when we're going to be able to reschedule. Ryan, so I'm sure there's going to be something. There's <laughs> definitely. There's lots of questions coming in. I know you guys are all excited about the Sims 3 University Life. Sorry we weren't able to get the demo up and running. We're having a little technical difficulties, but I got to tell you guys, this game is looking awesome, and I know you guys have lots of questions. So, uh, Brittany, can you give me a little bit more info on what the juice keg is all about? It sounds like a pretty sweet new feature. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I actually really love the juice keg. Um, the, uh, it, it, this is actually a favorite from Sims 2. I think a lot of people remember this, uh, this object really fondly. Um, I love it because not only do we have a new party type, which is the juice keg party type, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, you can do, you can just pour juice. You can obviously, uh, you know, do a keg stand, which is pretty fun. Um, we actually caught, uh, I, I forgot his name, but there's the really old guy who lives in the fraternity. He's kind of a party <laughs> animal. And uh, we caught him doing a keg, the keg stand the other day, and it was hilarious. <laughs> um, but if you're not so great at it, or if you've had a little too much juice, you might fail your keg stand. Um, might get is, dropped. Yeah, it's also a little funny. <laughs> old guys doing keg stands. 
what's a university experience without that, right? Uh, so another question coming in, uh, and this is something I've been wondering about too. I've heard a little bit about different kind of teas. I've heard about the Wonder Petal Tea, and I know you guys showed off some cool stuff to the uh, community that was here yesterday. Can you talk a little bit more about the Wonder Petal Tea and what it has, what kind of an effect it has on my sim? Definitely. Um, so Wonder Petal is actually just one of the many herbs that we've added in University Life. Um, there are tons of different kinds of herbs. There's uh, buzzberry and lavender and ginseng and cinnamon. Chamomile. Um, <laughs> there are tons. Fun. There's yeah. so many. And the really cool thing is that they're harvestable. So you can plant these and grow them in your garden. But they all have really interesting effects. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Wonder Petal, like Ryan mentioned, is actually a way to kind of boost your studying efforts. So drinking a little Wonder Petal tea before you go into a study session will kind of just help you uh, get a little bit more out of hitting the books. Um, I want to say I, Buzzberry, actually, I think may be the one that helps you lose weight faster. So uh, these aren't just university related. There are mm -hmm. things that help you in your home world. Yeah, and some will help you stay awake longer and, and just a variety of effects. And they're fun to play with. So definitely, I recommend everyone giving a shot when you get in the game. But don't try too many at once. Um, you can get herb sickness, which is kind of a little gross and nauseous. Um, <laughs> but there are lots of ways for you to try herbs as well. So, you, uh, you know, I mentioned you can grow them in your garden. You can add them to your dishes that you're, you know, making for dinner. You can uh, add them to a tea or order a tea from the, the barista. Um, or my favorite way is adding them to the bonfire. So you throw an herb in the bonfire, and it affects everyone that's kind of hanging around the bonfire, and some crazy things can happen. Yeah, I definitely recommend trying cinnamon on that one. For sure. There's something behind the cinnamon that you can share with us. Maybe something a little Valentine's Day related. <laughs> cinnamon definitely inspires romantic, crazy behavior. Uh, people are a little bit more likely to, uh, to, I don't know, pursue their romantic interests when uh, cinnamon's involved. There's a couple of new romantic things related with cinnamon too. So you'll just have to experiment and see what happens. Cannot wait to see what that what that does to my sins. Uh, it sounds awesome. Uh, so another question coming in through the forums is everybody's kind of wondering how the, the world works. Now, we've heard that it's a university world. Can you give us any more details on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the university world is a, a travel world. Um, some of you that are familiar with World Adventures would know a little bit of how that works. Um, when you first enter into Sensory University Life, you'll live in one of your home worlds. So whether that's Bridgeport or Sunset Valley or Aurora Skies, uh, that world is beautiful, by the way. Uh, it's awesome. Um, so you live there, and then when you choose to enroll in university, you actually will travel away. The moving mm -hmm. truck comes by and uh, picks up you in your suitcase, and you move away to university. Stay there for a little while, uh, depending on how long you've chosen for your term. And then you uh, return home, so you back to spend some time with your family, maybe kind of revamp and get ready, and you can uh, return to university again. How about any new venues? I've played a little bit in the world and saw lots of great new stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of venues are going to be there? Definitely. For sure. There's a bunch of new venues. My personal favorite is Peace Comics. It's a great hangout spot for nerds, which is one of our new social groups. Um, we also have the Grotto, which is where the Rebels like to hang out, and Bees Volorama, where you'll find a lot of the jocks. But oh, There's a few more. Oh, the coffee shop, of course, which mm -hmm. is where everyone likes to go and study. Um, the Student Union is also a new one. That's a kind of a, a cool hangout. Um, that's also where your lectures will take place. Sorry. Uh, Mid-message. Mid <laughs> okay. Uh, they're, they're giving us tons of hints of questions to, to answer for you guys. So it's uh, we're, we're getting info from all these places for Twitter and Cover It Live. Um, so, yeah, the coffee shop, student union, um, tons of things like that. Mm -hmm. Lots of really fun things. And, of course, new venues to live. So the dorms, sororities, fraternities, those are all new lot types with tons of cool things that are happening on them. That sounds amazing. Really great stuff, guys. Nice work. Uh, so another question uh, that's coming in, people are wondering about how uh, how classes work in majors. Can you give us a little bit more details on um, what kind of classes Sims are going to be taking and what effect it has on their life while they're at university? Sorry, Ryan, wait, what? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I totally spaced no on your worries. question. No worries. We're trying to get the demo running. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, people are wondering how, how majors and classes work while Sims are university. We talked a little bit about the party scene, but I know there's got to be a little bit more than that if we're calling the pack university. Am I right? Wait, what? You didn't just party through university? That's, <laughs> I thought that's what you were supposed to do. 
Uh, no, definitely. Life is all about balance uh, in university. So, you know, have fun with your friends, spend some time partying, check out the new venues. But uh, it's definitely, you know, class is still important. Um, and we actually have a variety of ways for you uh, to gain academic performance while you're attending university. So uh, outside of like the rabbit hole classes, um, you do still kind of have a few rabbit hole classes to go to, but they've got some fun tones and some really cool feedback from your professors, depending on how well you're doing. Um, but then we also have this cool concept of lectures. And uh, lectures are held on either Tuesday or Thursday, and those happen in the student union. It's a really cool idea where you can see your professors moving around. You can actually ask them questions. You can sleep through lecture. That's not going to help you academically too much, though. <laughs> but take notes. There's all sorts of things you can do. And then we don't want to forget about the academic objects. Definitely. So each major gets an academic object, and you'll have class activities scheduled either Tuesday or Thursday. And you'll basically get together with your classmates, and everyone will be working on their with their object, building academic performance. And a lot of them are really, really cool. Yeah, I consider this kind of like, uh, I, I would call it like a lab, like where all the fine arts majors will maybe grab their sketchbooks and they'll go hang out next to the fine arts building and they'll practice sketching people. Um, so tons of really fun things like that. And then, of course, studying. Don't forget, you got to hit the books occasionally or, or your smartphone. That's also a, a cool way to study if you're uh, you know on the go. Uh, so, yeah, tons of ways to build academic performance. And, of course, everything ends in uh, the exams at the end of the term. So, you know, you, everything kind of builds up. You want a great grade at the end of the term. So you take your exam, and then your final grades are given to you before you leave to go home. Excellent. Uh, so another question people are uh, very interested in, and I know this came up yesterday with the community as well, is how will my university world work if I have The Sims 3 Seasons installed? Am I going to be able to get weather there? How is that going to work with my gameplay? Yeah, we've gotten that question a lot on yes. Twitter as well. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. Here to answer. Uh, seasons will work in university. It looks amazing. Like the, the first time that we saw like uh, screenshots with uh, the, the snow on the ground, it just really make, makes me think of like a just great university mm -hmm. experience. You know, the leaves are turning. Um, the, it's kind of an interesting setup for how seasons will work in university world. So the, the options for your seasons can actually be set independently in university world versus your home world. Um, so you can kind of play around there if you want to kind of tell a story of maybe I left home in the spring and I'm traveling somewhere far for university and the weather's changed, that sort of thing. Uh, but it looks absolutely amazing. I say turn up the heat and crank up the spring break at university <laughs> world. That sounds awesome. Uh, lots of great stuff, guys. Now, I have to ask, Plant Sims, tell me more. <laughs> so yes, I'm sure a lot of you saw on Twitter yesterday with our, our community team, our community day here, um, plant sims are the new uh, life state in university, and uh, they're, they're beautiful. Like yes, this. they're stunning, like just visually to look at, and they are so much fun to play. They have lots of great things that are so unique to the plant sims to do, and you know, you'll find different ways to become a plant sim, and they there they are. Ways. So. Uh, you can, there are actually a couple in the world, so you know, keep an eye out. Uh, you, you can maybe notice them by their distinctive flower trails that follow them around everywhere. Um, there, uh, there's a blog coming out soon that will actually have more info on Plant Sims in particular, so keep an eye out for that. Classic Sims 3 life state occult creature back in the game. I'm so excited to see it. It sounds awesome. Uh, again, lots of great stuff coming in. Uh, lots of great stuff. This build sounds like it's awesome. Uh, people are wondering about the smartphones. I know we've heard a little. Can you give us a little bit more info on how you first, how you get the smartphone? Is it something you get and build by, or is it something I, I pick up when I get to this university world? Uh, give me a little bit more info on how I get it and then what I'm doing with it once I have it. Yeah, actually, the smartphones are one of the most exciting things that I think we did for the university. Um, it, we kind of neglect it sometimes when we're talking about all the great things of university, just I think because we've gotten so used to seeing them. Um, I feel like they've always been part of the game. Um, but they're really cool. So with Sims 3 University Life, actually, every Sim gets an upgrade to their phone. Uh, so we really wanted to make everybody feel a little bit, you know, get rid of those kind of clunky phones and, and get something that's a little bit sleeker and a little bit cooler and newer. And, uh, of course, with the new look comes tons of new features. Uh, we've got cool new ways to communicate. Texting is a big part of t uh, Sims communicating back and forth. Uh, and that definitely has a lot of options. Um, some of you that remember cameras from World Adventures, uh, we've integrated the camera into your smartphone. So you can now just take pictures on the fly with your phone, which I know I do constantly. I did all day yesterday <laughs> during Community Day. 
Uh, plus, they have some really cool integrations into our social groups. Mm -hmm. And um, we can't forget that. Well, you can definitely check your status of your the influence you've built with a certain certain social group on your smartphone. And it gives you, on that info panel, it gives you lots of ideas of what activities help build influence with each so social group and like, what other sims are in that social group that you might want to hang out with. And you can check what level you are. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do on that, on the phone that way. But we can't forget about the social networking skills. Oh, definitely. I think with wanting to really give you a modern campus feel, like a university experience, we really we have a new skill called social networking. It's a ton of fun. You can text with friends. You can browse the web, stream videos. Cat videos. Cat videos, for sure. Gotta have cat Lots videos. Of cat videos. And then we also have a blog app which is really, really cool. Definitely. So you can start blogs, you can post pictures to blogs, you can gain followers, you can actually ask your followers for things, and you can also sell your blog. You know? Yeah, actually, uh, you can actually earn some pretty good cash from having a blog if you uh, you really want to kind of keep up the effort mm -hmm. there. It's, uh, it's, it's really fun, and there's tons of new things there. There's actually a bunch of new apps and things that we haven't even mentioned. Uh, uh, one thing, so... One thing that I really do want to mention that's really cool about the smartphones is they do come with a variety of different skins. So you can actually reskin your phone to have kind of different, cool, different colors or different uh, uh, logos and stuff on them. And uh, building up your social networking way is a really great uh, social networking skill. Sorry, is a really great way to access those skins. So you guys talked a little bit about the social groups and uh, the modern university experience. Um, how does age play in the university? Are my elders going to be able to go back to school? You know, they always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I want my elders to be able to learn stuff too. Learn stuff too. Uh, how does age play into the ability to go to university? Well, I think we talked earlier about the old guy living in the frat house. <laughs> so we opened up ages so young adults, adults, and elders can all attend university. Again, it kind of gives it that more modern campus feel. Um, so many times nowadays you'll go to work first and you'll go back to school. Um, so we just really wanted to give you a bunch of options with what stories you wanted to tell. And again, you know, the, just open it up, have a lot of fun. You'll see elders doing keg stands. You'll see them playing juice pong. So again, just a lot of fun and all those groups can go. And I know a lot of people have asked about teens. Um, so we haven't forgotten about your teens. While you know you kind of have to graduate high school before you can attend university, there are lots of things that you can do with your teen and, and even child sims, especially now that you can start learning skills as a toddler with uh, <laughs> the brand new venue for Aurora Skies. Like, start, start from birth, man. Get ready for university. All these things that you do to build up your skills and traits and... Uh, you know, part-time jobs, things like that, things that you do along the way can actually all benefit you towards scholarships and really cool things for university when your kids hit young adult and they're, yes. they're ready to go. So guys, it is Valentine's Day. Can you tell me a little bit if, about if there's going to be any kind of new romantic interactions in this game? Oh, ooh, that's not where I thought you were going with that question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there are a bunch of new romances. Um, you know, we talked a little about the phone. You can actually take a kissy picture with someone, which I think is a lot of fun to capture the moment. And um, we have definitely new kisses. There's a bunch of stuff to do. Uh, yeah, and of course with the new herbs, there are some new interactions that come there from uh, some more daring, uh, you know, uh, interactions with, with herbs. Um, also, I mean, not to put it down on Valentine's Day or whatever, but if it's just not working out, you can send a breakup text you through can. your cell phone. It's um, really convenient. It saves you that. It's not you. It's me talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is cold. <laughs> Breaking up via text message, really? Man, you guys are cold. Uh, so let's get back to the academics here. Uh, kind of interested to hear a little bit more, you know. I'm going to spend a lot of time in university going towards my major. Uh, when I graduate, I assume I'll probably get a diploma. Is it going to help me uh, pass, pass my university experience when I get back to back home from, uh, from all my studies? Oh, definitely. Like we, we really wanted your university experience to impact your life um, and in some very you know, deep and profound ways. So, you know, having a degree, every, every degree and every major is associated with certain careers and, and that you're familiar with in the base game. Um, so, for instance, you know, fine arts major will automatically uh, get benefits in culinary or music careers. Um, your grades are important here. Mm -hmm. So uh, graduating with a higher grade will definitely give you better benefits. You can start at a higher career level. Um, better bonuses, salary. Yeah, better salary, <laughs> um, you know, easier promotions, things like that. Um, so definitely keep in mind your grades if you're really wanting to overachieve in, in your uh, post-university life. Uh, but there's also some really cool stuff here that we've done with traits. So um, 
Graduating from university actually now unlocks a new trait slot. So uh, in, in the normal five traits that your sim has, actually you can now augment them with something that you feel like maybe your sim's personality has changed, they've grown while they've been, been in university. Um, I like the, the example of like maybe my sim wasn't very artistic when they left to go to school, but they've kind of gotten in with the rebels and they've learned maybe some new artistic things and uh, maybe switched to a fine arts degree. And uh, so now they've got an, art an artistic trait that will kind of go with them for the rest of their life and, uh, you know, impact their personality. So it sounds like it does have a big impact uh, depending on what you study uh, and if you end up graduating. Um, what would you guys say your favorite majors are in this pack? <laughs> uh, you pick. <laughs> you go first. Um, I probably fine arts for me or communications. I was actually a communications major, so you know I can really relate to comm majors. Um, but really, every major is so much fun, and I am definitely a lifelong student. So I would have a sim that would go back and get like almost yeah. every degree. Go so, them all. so don't forget, you can go back. You know, there's a there are benefits for going back and getting multiple degrees. So. And the objects that every sim receive with their major are like so much fun. Um, they're not specific to that major. Other sims can use them, but you know, for instance, the sketchbook will actually benefit a fine arts major with their academics. Um, so you know, anybody can can use the sketchbook, but uh, but it's so much fun to use these objects. And for me, that would be just enough of a reason to go back and and play with these yeah. and take the different classes. Class names are so much fun. Uh, <laughs> theories of tragic clowns or, or studies of girls. I think my son was reading Llama Rights. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the, the stories that come with going to multiple classes and getting you know different majors is, is actually pretty cool too. Sounds awesome. Sounds like if you're looking to go back to university, this is your chance. From the partying to the classes to the studying late nights for your majors, it, it really sounds like it's all there. Uh, one last question. This keeps popping up. Can you guys let me know when the game is officially being launched? Yeah, totally. We are so excited for this game. I, I can't wait for you guys to be able to play it uh, so we can talk to you more detail on the forums and things about all the great stuff that's in it. Uh, we actually launched March 5th in North America uh, within the same week, I think, in Europe. But please check with your retailers. Um, or order on origin.com. Of course, if you pre-order, we've got the great uh, party statue, the party's Maximus. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren's really yeah. in love with that no, statue. No, it's great. So. Pre-order, it's amazing. Um, with the pre-order on the limited edition, you get the party's Maximus statue, which lets you set the party mood, and you can change the party theme attire. It's definitely a lot of fun, worth checking out, and we have special content just for origin orders too, so I recommend doing both. <laughs> pajama party that sounds great thanks guys for answering all the questions uh big apology for not having the demo ready today uh unfortunately we had some technical difficulties uh but don't worry we're going to be rescheduling a special one that will just be the demo so you guys can check it out we're all very excited about this pack and want to make sure you guys get a chance to play it now don't forget Brittany mentioned our producer walkthrough which is going live today uh, make sure to check that out. We're going to be uh, uh, sending links out via our Facebook, our Sims 3 Twitter, and I'm sure you can find it from the Sims3.com as well. Uh, so lots of great stuff going on. And I also wanted to reiterate uh, some of the Sim Gurus up here today have talked about how they're going to share some stuff from uh, their, their Sim Guru accounts on Twitter. Uh, so make sure you're following all of us because we have lots of great stuff coming your way. We're going to be sharing screenshots, uh, maybe even a video to, or two from these accounts. So make sure you're up to speed with what's going on with the Sim Gurus. There's lots of awesome stuff we're going to be sharing over the next few months uh, as all these games are coming out. Um, so I think that's just about all the time we have today for our live broadcast. We really appreciate all you guys tuning in. Uh, it is an epic year for The Sims 3. Uh, as we mentioned in our last, last broadcast, we have tons of new stuff coming out this year. Uh, starting last month in January, we released The Sims 3 70s, 80s, and 90s stuff, which transport your Sims back in time uh, to a world that's full of awesome 80s content, groovy stuff from the 70s, and some even some grunge rock stuff from the 90s. Hope you guys have gotten a chance to check it out. It's looking awesome. Uh, and as you guys heard, March 5th, The Sims 3 University Life is coming out. You can pre-order it now. Uh, the game's looking great. Uh, make sure to check out the producer walkthrough video and uh, stay tuned for uh, the next live demo uh, where we're going to feature uh, stuff that we couldn't show today. Uh, then after that, coming up in June is The Sims 3 Island Paradise, a pack that is so 
full of firsts for The Sims 3. We can't even list how many things are coming in that. We have houseboats, we have scuba diving, we have resort management. It is looking awesome. As of today, you can pre-order it. Uh, you're going to be getting an awesome limited edition pack that comes with content that you got to stay tuned to hear about, but I trust me, you're going to want to see this stuff. It's looking awesome. Then later in the year, we have a untitled expansion coming that allows you to transport your Sims to the future. It is looking amazing. Uh, there's lots of stuff coming along, and we've actually opened up a thread on the sims3.com forums uh, where we're looking for input from you guys. Uh, we want to see what you guys are looking for in these Sims games, so make sure to get on there and share some of your ideas, some of your feedback. We read these forums, and we listen to your tweets online, so make sure to check all this stuff out. Lots of great stuff coming. And then later in the year, we're going to have the last SP of the year, the Sims 3 movie making stuff, which is a pack that I have been wanting to make forever. It's going to give you guys all kinds of great costumes and movie sets from classic film genres uh, that are going to allow you to tell stories like you never had before in the Sims 3. So as I mentioned, a huge year coming for the Sims 3, uh, not to mention the Sims 3 store with Aurora Skies coming out in a week from today. Lots of great content in that pack and lots of great stuff coming out from the Sims 3 store throughout the year. So we really thank you guys for tuning in today. It's been a great broadcast. Uh, we're going to get the University Life demo coming out. Stay tuned for the date on that. We're really excited about it. And a big happy Valentine's Day to all the lovers out there. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate you having here. Send us your feedback on the forums, on Twitter, on our Facebook. We're watching. We want to hear from you. Thanks, guys.